Mark Hummel and welcome to Mark Hummel's Harmonica Party. Uh, we are sponsored by Seidel Harmonicas and Electrofy Records. And tonight I'm going to be talking to Peter Albin, the original bass player in Big Brother and the Holding Company, and one of my original idols. When I started getting into music, it was really through Big Brother and the Holding Company, and I saw pictures of Big Brother with their long hair and their beads, and I said, I'm going to be a hippie. And Janis Joplin just did something to me that made me hear the blues for the first time. And through her music and, and groups like Cream and uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix and even Blue Cheer, all these groups, I, I found out about blues and I found out about people like Muddy Waters and Helen Wolf, Little Walter, Sonny Boy Williamson, Otis Rush. These are... These were, this was the intersection for me of blues rock and blues. And uh, we're also going to talk about the Fillmore and the Avalon ballrooms because that was really where these older bluesmen got to play with the younger rock bands and it really preserved the blues uh, on a national level in so many ways. So I think we got a great conversation for you on my podcast tonight. Thank you. All right. I'm Mark Hummel and I'm sitting here with Peter Alvin from Big Brother, and uh, I'm just going to throw some names at him and just let him roll with it. So uh, the first one I wanted to ask you about, See if I can catch Peter, these names, yes. And thank you for being here today. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, I w the first name I wanted to throw out is uh, Pigpen. Yeah, Ron McKernan, Pigpen. Well, he was a guy that was uh, in the folk music scene that I was involved in back uh, in the early 60s down the peninsula. He lived in Palo Alto, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure where he went to school, but he was like, when I met him, he was like 15 years old. Now, how old were you? I was probably 17. Okay. I, I was at least a couple years older than, than uh, Ron. And uh, we had this club, my brother and I, called the, Bo the Boar's Head. And it was just a, a kind of like a meeting place on the weekends during the summers of 60, to 61, I think, maybe. We uh, reached out to uh, uh, the Southern Peninsula folkies, which included Jerry Garcia, Bob Hunter, and they brought up uh, with them friends like Ron McCurden, and, and that's how I got to meet Ron. And he was a great harp, harp player, I thought. He also played a little bit of guitar. And I heard he played piano. Too. He played a lot of piano, yeah. yeah. He came to my house one time, my parents were middle class parents, you know, and, and he sits down and starts playing boogie woogie and blues and I stuff heard, like yeah. that. But my mother said, you know, he's got some problem with his, with his face, because <laughs> <laughs> he had a horrible acne. You know? Really? Yeah. Oh, he's got to do something about it. I, maybe a, a compound that I can... <laughs> no, mom. <It's> the... <laughs> but anyway, uh, he was a, a good guy, but he drank a lot. He was a real talent, though. I mean, as I, yeah. I really liked his guitar playing. I thought his guitar playing yeah. was really good. Yeah, good guitar player. His father had something to do with blues yeah. in, in radio. Now, whether he was a DJ or whether he was a programmer, I don't mm -hmm. know. But he had a fantastic collection of blues yeah. records. Fantastic. Yeah. And he, Ron knew a lot of uh, African-American folks back down in East Palo Alto. East Palo Alto. T-Bone Walker lived in... Palo Alto. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. There was a guy Sanders, named yeah. David X, who was a singer that, that sang at the Boar's Head once in a while with Jerry backing him up hmm. and Big Ben playing, playing harp behind him. So they already knew each other when you met him? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure whether Big Ben knew him through uh, Dana Morgan's, which was a store that, that uh, Jerry taught guitar out oh, of. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we found out, you know, that, that Brownie and Sonny were, were uh, right. You know, Sonny Terry were, Brian McGee were playing at a small club. I think it was probably down in San Jose, something like that. So really? we, we went what down. What year was that? Do you remember? Probably 60, 61. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And much. we were like, I mean. Well, they were big on the folk scene. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the clubs, the yeah. folk clubs were very small. See, I didn't realize that all of you oh, went yeah. that far back. Yeah. Well, there wasn't yeah. that many places, right. so you you would meet these people. Garcia was playing in the kind of a back of one of the the areas there, playing playing away, playing, yeah. playing, away, playing guitar. So uh, we'd heard about him, and and so my brother dragged me and David Nelson, who was a high school buddy of mine, 
down in, in, and we kind of like snuck around the bookshelves, you know, because this is the famous Jerry Garcia. You know, was right? he famous by that time? Well, kind of. He, he yeah, was the guy that could a, play anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah he, he was, was kind really of a, good. a famous guy with musicians, yeah. basically. And we found out that later he had been a rock and roll guitar player. Ah, and he also okay. played with Troy Weidenheimer at some of these uh, frat parties. Wow. Yeah, yeah, electric guitar. But most of the time he was, he was doing... Finger picking. Right. And then he right. got into banjo, five string yeah. banjo, and he, well, he could play anything. He could play right. mandolin and whatever. Right. And uh, so Pigpen was a friend of his, and yeah. that's how we kind of got Interesting. Because he seemed to have a, I mean, Pigpen seemed to have a pretty big imprint on the dead in early oh, on. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, you know, yeah. the early dead gigs, yeah. he was the lead singer. He was the lead singer. And then that brings me to how Janis <sighs> Joplin and how you guys met. Well, Janis Joplin goes like, actually about about the same time. Really? When my brother w went to San Francisco State College, he became like the San Francisco State Folk Music Festival director mm -hmm. for, for, two, for two years. And that's when you were saying you saw the Chambers Brothers and Barbara. Yeah, and Barbara and, Dane, yeah. yeah. And we did a, a show called The Midnight Special at KPFA with oh, Gert Carrito. It was a round robin thing with this huge microphone hanging down in the middle. Oh. And there was this girl sitting next to me, you know, wearing a man's shirt and, and no bra, you know, and just kind of ragged looking, you know, with a guitar. And so me and my brother played a song and then it would go round, you know. So she started, he opened her mouth, he started singing. It was incredible. Wow. It's like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Where'd this girl come from? Interesting. Texas. Yeah. She came from so Texas. had she just moved out? She had moved out, and I think that was probably, I want to say, 63. And I couldn't be wrong. I can be wrong on these dates, but 63, 64, she was in the Berkeley area. And that, I think that for a while, too, she went down to Venice. I think in New York, and uh, my my brother got a hold of her, and because we played another gig with with a paying gig with her at the coffee gallery, yeah. and she didn't need a microphone. I mean, she wow. was wow, she wow. was incredible, incredible wow. singer, big voice. Now, did Chet uh, Helms have anything to do with? He brought her, her out. Here? He brought that's her out. He was the yeah, first guy that brought her out. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. He brought her out here. So then uh, we, but my brother booked her at the San Francisco State Folk Music Festival. She didn't show up. When the band started getting together, getting to Big Brother stuff, mm -hmm. um, Chet mentioned her, you know, okay. and, and when he said, well, I, you know, because we started looking for female vocalists. Right. We actually auditioned several. We start, started playing <clears throat> a jam session that, that Chet had organized. It was Wednesday nights in the summer of 65. There was like little podium kind of things in this, this, the downstairs basement area. Uh, it was a beautiful room. It had been like a ballroom for wow. this family. Huh. It was all, uh, you know, beautiful uh, maple flooring and uh, redwood uh, siding. Right. Uh, and so we, we played there uh, on Wednesday nights as like the, the, the uh, house band. Right. So other people would come in, you know, bands would come in. Sometimes they would need a bass player. That's when I started learning how to play bass. Hmm. So were I, you a I guitar player? I was a guitar that? player. Oh, okay. Yeah, most of the right. time. But I knew all of the, the bass runs. Right. Playing bluegrass music. Right. Like ding, 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 you know. Right. So uh, then uh, we started looking for these female vocalists, and Chet suggested Janis job. We mentioned her name, and I said, I know who she is. And yeah, James wow. Gurley, who had joined the band, he said, I know who she is. Hmm. You know, we played in the same bill, or, you know, because he lived in North Beach and, and knew her f from that early time. Interesting. Wow. So, and he said, let me call, let me call my friend Travis Rivers. He's down in Texas now. Now, does the name ring a bell at all? He was the manager for, for Tracy Nelson's band. Oh, for Mother Earth, and for that's Mother how... Earth. That yeah. harp player yeah. that played in that band. Yeah. What was Powell his? St. John. Powell St. John. John. Yeah. 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 Basically, Travis Rivers romanced Janice, you know. Mm. And uh, they said they would, they, would, they would have sex all the way to California, you know. <laughs> and it was fun. But the moment that she landed, you know, in, in San Francisco, then yeah. I, that, that kind of... That all came apart. That, that yeah. relationship fell yeah. apart. And she kind of uh, uh, gravitated to James Gurley. Oh, who was okay. married at the time yeah, and had a Jesus. kid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Oh, man. You know, it, the story gets a little messy, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did how'd David, David Getz get in there? Later. That was okay. about... Uh, so he was not your original drummer? No, no. Chuck okay. Jones was original drummer, and the first major gig that we did 
uh, this was without Janice, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, January in 66, mm -hmm. the, the Trips Festival at oh, the okay. Longshoreman's Hall. Wow. By the Fisherman's Wharf. And was that Kesey's deal? Yeah, Kesey yeah. was involved. But right. it's actually four or five different entities that were involved in it. Uh, the the uh, uh, psychedelic shop people, the Thalen brothers, were right. involved in it. Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. I hope you're enjoying the Harmonica Party and the other content that we post on our channel. Now you can become part of the show for the price of a cheap cup of coffee. For three bucks a month, you can help bring the blues and the stories to you. Check out our Patreon page and join us for exclusive content, early releases of episodes, and some rewards specifically for our Patreon friends. Thanks for helping us keep the blues alive. How close were you guys to the airplane? Were you guys pretty close? Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had seen Marty Ballin in another group called the Town Criers back, again, in folk music days, probably yeah. 61, 62. He was really good. It was a good group. One of the, the people from Palo Alto, Joni Sims, a singer, and uh, she said, I hear there's an audition for a, a rock group down at this club called The Matrix. Can you back me up? I said, sure. What do you want to do? And we went through this a couple of songs. And this was so, for the airplane? We didn't know. Oh, okay. So we, we right. drove down to the Matrix and uh, I get in there and there's, I think another person had just gotten off so Joni just immediately jumped on stage. And, Hi, I'm Joni Sims and this Peter I mean, started, did this song. It was like we played to nobody except for a figure that was very dark and shadowy and way in the back of the room. I couldn't see. Is that Marty Bellin? And it happened to be Marty Bellin. Okay. So after, after we uh, did our thing. We went back there, and Joni, of course, was very brash. Well, how'd you like that, huh, Sonny? You know, and, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, it's Marty." Uh, she said, "Oh, hi." You know, uh, no, uh, uh, no, you're not our style. I'm sorry, but uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> so uh, after that, then then Big Brother started to get together. We started rehearsing, and we had these these jam sessions in '65 during the summer, and that's when the airplane was getting it together. But Ballin got together some of these people that he had either played on the same bill with or knew you know, from school or whatever, you know, right. and got this group together. Now, were you guys, where you lived on Page Street, was that close to where they lived as well, or, or did they live Kind in of. So describe what that was like, I mean, all these musicians living getting in together. Page Street kind yeah. of before, before it kind of became the Haight-Ashbury, I mean, you know, well, again, like the how, uh, did, how did it happen in terms of people all kind of ending up in the same area? Uh, well, a lot of people heard about these jam sessions, and they uh -huh. lived in the neighborhoods or close by would come, and so there was like a network in there. Garcia, you know, would right. would come. Uh, uh, Pigpen sometimes would come. So would you say would you say that the scene really kind of came together in '66, '67? Uh, I would say it started in 65, particularly 65. With, with, okay. with the airplane. And yeah. were you guys living there in 65? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was living at 1090 Page Street. Did you guys all end up living in the same house at one point? Um, not in the Haight-Ashbury. We, we oh, actually okay. rented a place in Lagunitas, in Marin County. Hmm. Beginning okay. in June of 66, and that's when we got, didn't know that. We got wow. Janice, and then yeah. she moved in. Uh, so that's she how had she a little ended up place. in Marin. Yeah, right, yeah. With, with the band. Right. So we had enough rooms in this place that you know, people had their, their privacy, kind of. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of those kinds of uh, houses out there were built probably in the 20s right. and had paper-thin walls, and uh, you could hear people, you know, doing things. <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> get old. <laughs> yeah. I would get old oh, quick. And 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 Pigpen and, and uh, Janice had a thing. Like an ongoing thing? Or? No, I just once in a while. I mean, just thing, once in a yeah. while, because yeah, I, I had a feeling about that. <laughs> Janice was was. Uh, she got around. She got around, and she yeah. she got you know you know only not only men you know she had. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, there's a great story about her when she was. Uh, you know who? Uh, uh, you were the original Fleetwood Mac, right? The original yeah. band when it was yes. a blues band. Yeah, oh yeah, they played. They played. I know they played the Fillmores. Yeah, and, Fillmore. and there's a great story about her, kind of basically taking Danny Kerwin and kind of taking him hostage for a week or two, because <laughs> he was like 18 or something. Yeah, he was like 17 or yeah, 18. Yeah. 
She just basically well, some, kidnapped there, him. There's yeah. some, definitely some funny stories regarding mm -hmm. Janice and her prowess and whatever. Yeah. So, uh, so Joe is somebody, Country Joe McDonald's is somebody you knew. Yeah, yeah. What, from basically from, from, from the, the Fillmore? Band. From the Fillmore. Times. Yeah, from the yeah. band. And, and he was basically, their band was a Berkeley band. It was Right. A, they were kind of the East Bay political yes. band that nobody else would. Right. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. we weren't that political. You yeah, know, I think you know, they were one of the few political bands. Yeah, yeah. And like did that. songs that, that were, were politically oriented. Right. Right, and it seems like the the San Francisco bands really kind of seem to steer clear of that more. Huh? Yeah, and and yeah. Big Brother first started out as a uh, kind of a cover band doing doing some uh, R and B stuff. We did all right. this writing stuff. We did right. uh, a couple of gospel tunes, which appeared later on our first re record. Blind Man is is a is a song we got from a uh, I believe it was a, uh, a recording done in the South. Oh, interesting. Uh, and um, Down On Me is another one. That was some choir. I thought that was you guys. You didn't write that? You didn't write that. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I yeah. have that album still. And that's an interesting record because it I really like shows it. Janice, at, yeah. at, you know, when she was just starting. Well, it's, a much, starting it's a much it's, cleaner recording right. than, than all the, the... Cheap thrills and other yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And her voice is, is clear. Her voice is very clear on that. Yeah. 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 But Janice was a, a person who could do a lot with her voice. Um, my wife and I had a, a baby that was just born in, in May. So we're moving into this house in, in, in June uh, with the band. And uh, we have this, this uh, schedule that we stop rehearsing at like 9 o'clock or something like that. You know, uh, most of these people start boogieing, but we, we had to say, we got two kids here, right, they right. got to go to bed, you know, yeah. we got to, you know. So I'm upstairs with my wife, and we put the baby down in the little crib, and, and I'm starting to hear, um, someone put on a fucking Joan Baez record, you know, and turned it way up, you know, I said, shit, you know, it's supposed to be quiet time, you know, so I go down the stairs, and I'm going to turn off the record player, and here's Janice playing. Silver Dagger. Really? Yeah, sounds wow. exactly like Joan Baez. Wow. But uh, I was going to say, you know, did now did she know Barbara, by the way? Did Janet? She had met Barbara. I was going to say, because I always the, the, heard that the, she was influenced the Dick's by Dick's Oxtot band was, right. was a group that, that she actually sang with and recorded with. Two songs. If you can find the... You're the, saying Bar Janice Janice Janet? Janice with, with, with Dick Oxtot. Wow. Yeah. And it was Barbara Dane and Phil Elwood. That got her to do Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. See, I never, I never heard yeah, that yeah. before. And they sat down and talked with Janice, and Phil played his record collection. Wow. Saying, "You got to hear some of this stuff." That's really interesting. Because she knew Bessie Smith, and she knew uh, well, that's Odetta. What I, was and, I was wondering if she and, knew who uh, Bessie Smith was. Oh, I had yeah, always yeah. heard that oh, yeah. Janice Joplin was. I mean, you can tell, like you listen to something like Turtle, Turtle Blues. Blues. Turtle Blues is very much of that. Yeah. Kind of. And that's a Janice song. That's, right, but it's yeah. very much in that Bessie Smith kind very of Very much so, and, and, and the backup is like that. Right, you know, exactly. Kind of, kind of funky at the piano player yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And I'm playing guitar in that. You know. Are you really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I noticed well, the but, guitar playing on uh, it, so okay. that's a good sign. Kind of funky. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. uh, you know, Janice knew a lot about that kind of music. Mm -hmm. and, and I think so she I was, was kind of like wanting to get into that scene down in Texas and you know, for a white girl from Port Arthur to start mixing with African Americans was kind of a no-no. Uh, and she went sometimes to New Orleans. Did she? And well, into Louisiana, I think right. so, uh, Port Charles. That's right, on, that's right on the edge. Yeah. So you know, she told stories about like that. All right. Well, thank you so much. Hey, Peter. it's been a pleasure. Let's play one. What do you say? Sure. Okay. <laughs>